right, so I'm going to try to do a release today, um, because we have a bunch of stuff that I think is, like, sort of in a ready state here. Um, oh, wow. Lots of new activity on a pull request. Okay. Um, wait, did I do this, or... I think, let's see. I opened this off of his branch. Okay, great. Um, and then he yeah, added stuff. Perfect. Um, all right. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff that, that is probably going to get merged today, and then we'll do a release. Um, sweet. All right, well, um, let's just get started. Uh, who wants to talk about stuff first? So, we've got, um, let's see who's on the call. Um, Saksham, do you want to talk about anything? Uh, like, uh, we talked about that uh, 326 issue, right? The R2 plugin ch uh, oh, yeah. change. The, wait, say again, which one? Uh, 326. 326. Yes, that's right. Uh, 326. Ah, yes. Um, and have you, is, are you stuck on anything here? Or is it, uh, is it sort of just coming along? No, I, uh, I haven't gotten around it. Okay. But, uh, cool. uh, I wanted to ask if you had anything you want uh, to tell me before I dive into it. Um, really just everywhere that there's arg used in these structures within the various config code, it's going to end up being plugin instead. Um, and it's a rip so I have to just replace that? Yeah, basically. And, and it may just be a, a simple case of find and replace it everywhere. It may end up being more okay, complicated. Okay, okay. Um, so, and then what's going to happen, and then also in the documentation, um, because, let's see. So, let's yeah, because basically what this is going to do is this is going to feed into also, um, where did that go? Uh, um, okay, let me make some notes. Uh, I'm working on 326, uh, changing arg to plugin. Besides this, I don't have anything to talk about today. Okay, cool. Yeah, I figured that would be quick. That's why we'd start with you. Um, let's see. Um, oh, and it's going to feed into... Where'd that go? Ah, here. Yeah, so... When we look at, like... Let's see, could I say that? No, it's config. So then we can... we Right now, when we export configs of various plugins, we end up with like, you know, arg is TFF DNNC, whereas the right, it would be better if, you know, it said model, and then the plugin is TFF DNNC, um, and then this is the config for that plugin, right? Um, rather than arg, I think that would just make more sense, and so that's why we're doing that. Okay, um, I'll take a look and let you know. Cool, and then after that, uh, yeah, this is going to just sort of well, this might be the next good issue to work on after that, is, is the ability to specify the command line flags via the config file, because that will, sort of, that config file will make more sense then. Um, and we can j basically just load it and translate it into, uh, um, uh, back into the arguments. And there's also the note about the sources, so, because there's that sources class, and um, it's, as we discussed in the previous issue, what was that, like 325, um, where we need to figure out how to pass arguments to the sources class, um, that is going to be difficult until we sort of do that unif unification of the, the way that the command line arguments work and the way that the config structures work. So let's see. Uh, then, um, let's see, 409. Take a config file and make it uh, into inline args. Um, this is 
still issue with getting args. So we still have the issue with getting args to sources um, or configuration parameters to sources. Um, still issues with getting configuration parameters to sources uh, dependent on unifying uh, um, CLI args with rest of config infrastructure. Um, and so basically that's just, we're going to eventually have to take all of that arc stuff. When in, in, in each of the CLI commands there's that arc declaration um, and we need to make it so those CLI commands really just take a config class. Um, let's see. Cool. Uh, so then anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, uh, I think you pinged me in an issue, right? Uh, 501. Okay, let's see. Was that only just one change I would need to make? Or because I don't know the working of Travis CI. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, oh, good. Okay. Uh, this is, yeah, you just need to make the one change here. Um, to add the config, config loader slash PNG to this file. Um, and also, I believe we need to add it here. And that reminds me, we also need to add the transformer stuff. So I'm going to have to make, uh, I'm going to, let's see. Uh, this needs to happen today for the, for the release too. So let's see. Yeah, we need this in here for the release. Um, so this needs to get done soon. I mean, I can just do it um, because I'm going to have to go in here and modify this too. Um, but yeah, when we add the plugins, we need to make sure we add that line to the to the CI. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. I'm going to add this. I wonder. Oh, everything ends up in this milestone. Alright, well I'm going to go back through here and make sure that this one gets done. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, config loader PNG. Config loader slash PNG is not being run in CI said pre before today's release. Uh, CI um, and then we have to update secrets uh, pi pi deploy keys in uh, GitHub actions workflow. All right. Thanks for bringing it up. Um, sweet. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's move on to who else has uh, something there. So the way that we usually do this, I think that, yeah, Naeem is on the call. Um, so just wel welcome. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, hi, John. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah, thanks for joining. Um, and so the way we usually do this is we sort of just go through everybody who is on the call, because not everybody who's on the call, uh, or I guess not everybody who has pull requests up has the chance to make the meeting every week. Um, but basically what we go through and do is just everybody, uh, whoever has something to talk about next. And usually we try to do people with less stuff to talk about first, um, because some sometimes you'll have something very long that you need to talk about um, and or like you need a lot of input on something and so we try to save anybody who's going to need uh, to talk for a while till the end um, so yeah um, so let's see and, and oh wait I should have not close that so we can probably review your pull request here um, I looked at the other day I didn't jump on yesterday so I haven't seen anything that happened since yesterday um, Let's see. So I don't know if. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if VS Code will do this. If there's a way, there's probably is a way. But if you noticed, we try to keep the um, the. Uh, text width at like 80 columns, um, and I don't know if there's a way to wrap the t 
text in VS Code. I haven't found it yet, but for the sake of consistency, we probably want to uh, try to figure out how to do that here, because um, now you know some of the files are gonna, some of the files you've edited are going to have the long lines, and some are going to have right. the uh, the wrapped lines. So we probably want to figure out how to do that before we merge this. But other than that, this all looks great. Yeah, uh, uh, I can make it 80 columns. Sweet, and, thank you. And uh, push it again. Cool, cool. Yeah, this is looking great. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, so, uh, I created a folder and the index file in, inside mm. the editor's folder, but I'm not sure because still I think it's not connected anywhere. It's uh, oh. what you mentioned, but I don't know if automatically it will pick it up or yeah okay so let's see um, um, okay yeah so the way that we want to link that is by adding so let's see so we need to add to the what is it called need to add the talk tree so we need to add so we need to add this file the editors and actually we need to spell that differently editors is that yeah i don't think yeah okay yeah that's editors needs to be without the e the last e there um we need to add the editors slash index file to the talk tree in uh, docs contributing um, uh, where is it yeah index so in this file um, let me open it here okay. so contributing and then index. So yeah, so in this in this file here, we've got um, basically this is just the name of every other file, um, mm -hmm. right? And so if you want to, and it doesn't have the RST link, obviously. Um, and so you'll just need to do uh, editors slash index. Um, and I think if you go like, for example, if we have the main index, this is how this guy works they usually say like you know plug in slash index or for example to get down to that um to get okay. to that yeah contributing slash index so within contributing slash index you'll have editors slash index okay okay and then we should also probably say i think setting up the debugging environment is very similar to a netting yeah setting debug environment so let's see maybe this should be something more like because this is the section on editors um and there's another section on debugging so this should probably be like setting up your editor or something um uh, okay All right, great. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks for doing this. This is going to be very helpful. I recently had to go through and also try to figure out how to get on uh, this setup on Windows um, when we went in and, and you were having your issue um, with the, uh, the fast child watcher, which is weird because the Python documentation doesn't say that that's a Linux specific thing, um, but mm -hmm. obviously it's broken. So, and the other thing that was broken was that. Um, calling out to sub processes. Um, if you create sub processes with async IO on um, Python 3.7, it will just break. Whereas in Python 3.8, it does the switch um, to the uh, like protractor event loop or something, um, which ends up letting it create sub processes on Windows, which is weird. But yeah. Um, let's see. So let's see. Let's see. Contributing so editor documentation about VS Code. Uh, almost done. Just a few minor edits. Um, yeah. 
oh, and the other thing here is, uh, so yeah, editors is uh, should be without. Yeah, that I, will, I will fix that. Cool, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, but yeah, other than this, I think this is perfect. Thank you for doing this. Okay, absolutely, my pleasure. This is great. Yeah, it's always it's getting to the development environment setup is always challenging in any project. So having that process be as easy as possible for people is is always great. Um, mm -hmm. and as documented as possible. So, let's see. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? No, that's it for me. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Who else is on the call here? Um, let's see. Uh, Himachu, how, uh, how have things been with you? I haven't. I still haven't gotten the chance uh, to do yeah, Kanda. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. So I'm kind of free. So if you, if you have something to work on, I can work on that. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Update readme for should I? Oh hey, great. Um, let's see. Where is, okay, we should probably grab machine learning label here. Uh, let's see. Include example of how to use from Python API. I don't know if that's critical right now. Let's see, Wopo Rabbit. Um, hmm. Well, um, hmm. I mean, so have you tried to figure out if we can do Conda within the um, in within the CI yet? Have you have you messed with it at all? Uh, not much. Yes. When okay. It and then I thought, okay, I will leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I don't know when I'm going to get the chance to do that. So if you if you are looking for something immediate to do, that would definitely be like the highest value thing that you could do because then we could merge the other one. Okay. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to it. Okay, I can probably look into that, but I'm not sure whether I would have to do that in time. Okay. Because, uh, yeah. I'm not very sure. So yeah. If you if you have if you have something on operations or anything like that mm -hmm. that I can work on. Well, so, so really need to know that. Yeah, that that's that would be good too. Yeah. Okay. So, I think let's see what have we been doing with operations lately. Um, well, we talked about um, let's see. There's some stuff where I know Sakshama talked about doing images and stuff, um, and there's like a few a few people who want to do image things. Um, we also oh well, you also have your you know all your NLP yeah. models and stuff. So yeah. um, it's probably it would probably be good if, and this could feed into the thing that I think Ogden was also thinking of doing, but but just figure out how to use. Um, the uh, do we have a good? We probably don't have a good documentation on that. Um, let's see. I'm just thinking if we have run model where's operations. So model to predict. Ah, uh, we don't have a example usage of this, do we? Great. Uh, we need one. Um, uh, where would a good example of this be? Agen, do we have an example of this anywhere that we let's see? I know, I know it's being used somewhere. Yeah, uh, it's in that database thing. Which, which you're very, uh, you're very quiet. Oh, am I audible now? Still, I, I can barely hear you. Can everybody else? How is it? Yeah, hello, hello. Uh, just how bad? Is yeah, it? Like, it, it, we, it's audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, so it's in that model was uh, like left there, no, some, uh, some database merging thing. Okay. Uh, oh, is that in the, is the only usage in? Yeah. I know it's used there. Uh, I don't think we have used it anywhere else. We haven't, okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I can still barely hear you, sorry. Let's see. Predict. 
Okay, wait, here we go. Here's one. Let's see. Um, model predict. Yeah, that's an HTTP service thing. Um, uh oh, no, not there. Actually, oh, this might be a good one. Um, let's see, test service dev. Okay, train. Oh, perfect. Okay, I think this is exactly what we're looking for. All right, so this is, um, let's make it master. All right, so let's see. Uh, try to get a, um, so I would say the first thing to do would be uh, copy the structure or copy the, um, where was this? Yeah, okay, copy this guy. Um, so copy this test integration test service dev into um, model slash uh, transformers or, you know, model slash TensorFlow hub. Um, those are the two NLP ones we have right now, right? Um, and uh, try, let's see, because so what this test case is doing right here is, um, well, this one is testing export, but test run is what we're concerned with. So let me make a note of that too. So copy test run from Okay, so copy test run from there, um, and what it's doing here is it's basically saying, okay, I'm, I need, I require the scratch model to do this test, um, and then it's dumping out this CSV file, um, or it's creating a CSV file to use for the training data, um, and then it's training a model, and then it's running the develop CLI command, so it's running. Um, uh, DFFML service dev run, um, and it's it's passing the um, uh, it's basically saying run this operation, um, and here's the input um, uh, like here's the inputs to that operation is the features input is going to be this you know this structure here, and then the config for it gets passed in with the prefix of config. Um, and so like config model is scratch SLR and then config model features years and so obviously we, we pass in the years there and then config model predict is salary and it's you know telling us that that we want to predict the salary um, so this basically if you copy this structure then you'll figure out how to run the model you'll you'll have well let's see i mean you'll have the model running you you'll this test case will have trained the model well the models are kind of pre-trained right in this or is transformers all pre-trained i can't remember sorry i didn't get some of that you were cutting out uh yeah so training is always there, whether they are pretend or not. Most of oh, yeah. are training them again in order to treat them a bit. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the interface is the same. No problem. Yeah. Great. Okay. So let's see. So yeah, you could add this test case, and then you could sort of you know make sure this works, right? Um, make sure that it works with this this the model predict operation, um, and then after you do that, you could do something like um, let's see. Um, you could you could create a new operation that does um, that basically takes the input um, you know like the the regular input function from Python. Um, so make so make sure 
this works. Um, now make an operation uh, which just uh, calls the input um, function. And so, oof, eh, let's see what's going to happen here when we do this. Um, it's going to block. Uh, I think we need to start it in a separate thread. So, I think there's an example of this, though. So, um, so, so basically the input function is going to block the thread. So we're running in an event loop, right? Because this is all in async IO, uh, which means that if you do anything that, that is, um, you, you can't, if you expect any of the other things to run, um, like any, to expect that the, the coroutines run, um, we can't ever block the main thread. Um, and so the input, function is going to block the main thread. Um, and therefore, we have to start it in a its own thread, basically. So we're going to run this operation in its own thread. Um, and the only thing the operation is going to do is um, call the input function and then return the results, right? Um, so you can basically just, you know, make a little prompt. Okay, this is going to be what you're going to need for this. Um, so, oops. So, you make an operation which calls the input function, um, but because this will block the main thread, you'll need to start the... you need to run whatever function function calls or you need to run input within its own which then a new thread um, a reference for how to do that can be found here okay let's see so this is <clears throat> this right here is an example of um, this is an example of running a, a, a CPU bound operation. And in this case, it's a password ha hashing um, algorithm. And so what, this is something that that uh, is going to hog the CPU, and therefore it will uh, you know clog up the event loop, um, and therefore we have to schedule it out into its own thread. Um, and what you're going to do is basically you can take this, um, yeah. So you're gonna you're this it's calling it's saying run an executor, which basically says there's like this thread pool um, which we create down here, um, and within that thread or it's it's going to have a bunch of threads, right? And whenever you say run an executor, it's going to dispatch one um, to uh, to grab call the input function right and right now that you're it's calling self dot hash password with this this static method and it needs to be a static method um, because you can't it tries to serialize it I believe when it sends it through the thread um, and so it can't be attached to some kind of complex class instance here um, I can't I can't remember exactly but I believe that's what happens there's some problem when you don't make it static uh, I do know that and you'll run into it quickly if you want to find out more about it you just make it not static and you'll start knowing um, you'll see some errors so uh, basically, you can just replace the body of this function with a call to input. Um, now, what we should also do here is we should also use, um, let's see, I think I, we should probably just use a lock. I think I, uh, dot lock. Uh, so, you'll need one of these guys um, because you'll need this lock within probably, um, you probably want it within this operation implementation rather than the operation implementation context here. Um, and the reason for that is because obviously we'll only, we can only grab the input from the user in one thread, right? Um, so you're going to need a lock around this. Um, and then what you can do here basically is you're going to have this one thread which is sitting waiting for inputs. Um, 
or that you're going to have this operation, which is sitting waiting for inputs, and then every time it gets a new line, you're going to you send the output of that um, to your NLP model, right? And you're going to have it do something, right? So you'll use that model predict function to um, to. So we're making like a little chat here on the command line, basically. Um, and so you wait for input, you send the input over to the um, NLP model, and the NLP model, like you can print it back or something. You could have another operation that prints something out. Um, and then it just keeps going in that loop forever, right? Um, so that would be, um, let's see, that would be what we're doing here. And there's going to be a slight uh, variation on this. So um, we're going to end up actually... Well, I'll show you after you after you write this, um, but we're going to end up until we have until we have. Okay, let me just make the note that we're actually writing in chat here. Going to write uh, a um, and let's see. So the goal here here is to write a data flow where we're taking inputs from the user and um, uh, via the input function and then uh, passing it along to the model predict to diff model.predict model dot predict um, and then let's see um, passing along to TFF melt up model to predict, and then we'll probably need another. Um, then we need like we need to do something with that. You could just print it out, um, but we'll need another operation which does uh, a call to print. Because um, right now we don't have any operations that do that. We have just been grabbing grabbing it all at the end. But now what we're doing here is this is a more like dynamic in within the data flow. Um, you're you're basically the way that you, when you're writing a data flow, it's it's you're describing like a sequence of of events that should happen um, like on other events, right? So the first event is going to be. Um, yeah when we get an input, then what do we do with it, right? So then we're saying go to the model predict, and then after you do get the output of the model prediction, then you want to go to this print operation. And it's just going to keep doing that forever um, until you control C. Um, so that would be sort of the goal here. Um, does that sound good, or do you have any concerns about that? Or uh, And does it make sense? Um, yeah, it, it makes sense. I will try this. Yeah, uh, just 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 one thing. Uh, all the operations will be totally new, right? Uh, uh, there will be an NLP things stuff. So, the basically, so the new operations here, um, new operations. In summary, you'll make two new operations. Two new operations. Um, one which calls input. one which calls input, and one which calls print. Um, and then we're reusing, or we're, like, we're just using, using the model predict operation. Let's see. Operation, which already exists. Um, to uh, use the NLP model. Um, and so, let's see, there's going to be more. So this was just, this is just an example of, uh, oops, not this one. Um, okay, well, this is not good. Um, oh, this might actually be better here. Uh, no, it's not really great. Okay. Um, let's see. Test, test data flow. Um, 
so basically we're going to use we're going to use this existing operation to um, to run the predict method of the NLP model. Um, so in your test, similar to let's see what we just did here. Um, oops. So just so that's why we're starting with this one. Uh, we're starting with the scaffold of like just use this run method um, and then train the model, um, right? Because you said there's some pre-training involved, right? Or, or there's some training involved, and so we train. And then we run instead of we're going to replace this eventually. Just the first step is is do this, make sure this works, right? And then the next step is we're going to replace this, um, which just runs one operation, with something which runs um, a bunch or it runs all three of these operations, right? Um, so this would be under test df. Um, yeah, okay. So, you're gonna do is, okay, this is probably, this might be a good example, or it might not. We need a better example. This is, this, this needs a better example here, is what I'm realizing. Um, because this should have something very straightforward, but this is part of the new operations tutorials that we need to do. Um, we need to have a more clear way of figuring this out. Um, mm, I guess should I might be an okay way to do an example here, uh, but I'd like to have a test case. Um, mm, Hmm. Well, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have wonderful documentation for this now, I think. Um, I thought, uh, yeah, there should be under API reference data flow, data flow based objects. Um, oh, ah, damn it, it's not here. Okay. Um, I mean, the key here is basically we do these lines. Um, so let me copy this. Uh, so basically what we do is we say we create this memory orchestrator, um, and then we create a context, an orchestrator context, and within that context we run, um, that we pass, we call the run method, and we pass the inputs that we want. Um, and then the inputs that we want are, there's several different ways to format them, and this is what the the test case is showing um, is that you could pass them in in any different many different ways, um, but in this case, uh, we're I don't even know if we're going to need I don't even think we're going to have any inputs in this case. This is also going to depend on Augen getting the um, the operations without inputs pull request done, uh, which I think was almost done. Um, so basically, you're just going to call run after that. Um, and then you'll end up in this loop where it's waiting for inputs. Um, and with the test case, what we're going to end up doing there is we're going to have to mock the call to input um, so that we'll, we'll basically, once you get here, we'll kind of go through it more, but we're going to use the unit test dot mock dot patch. Um, so we'll set up an orchestrator and run orchestrator and the data flow. Um, then we'll run the data flow dependent on on again finishing uh, what is this called? I think where did it go? Right, four nine two. Finishing four nine two. Um, and I think that should be almost done if I remember when we last looked at it. Um, set up the orchestrator and the data flow. We'll run the data flow. Depends on finishing four nine two, um, and then. Uh, um, oh, and then we need to make or then we need to use unit test dot mock dot patch um, so that when um, uh, 
input gets called, we've uh, we've mocked it so that it doesn't actually try to go get input from the user because we're running in a test case. Um, so you'll want to use you'll want to use return value um, equals some string, um, and that will we'll, we'll probably you know we'll get to that when we get there. But uh, basically, we'll let me just find a call to mock. You can see it here. So unit test mock patch. Okay. Set new callable. Oh, this might be better. Okay, this is probably the best one. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're uh, calling patch and we're patching the time function within the time library and we're setting the return value to one. Um, and so that way when the code beyond this calls um, calls time.time, .time, it's always going to get a return value of one from that call. Um, and so what we're going to do here, and that way it doesn't go out and check the system time, and this test becomes uh, very reliable or very repeatable, um, because we know if there's there's some underlying um, there's a tar file that gets generated, and and in the process of that within this test, it gets gzipped, and the gzip library, um, when you gzip something, you add the timestamp for it some for some reason, um, and so. To make it always the same hash, we we end up setting the return value to one. So for your test case, what we're trying to do here is get the input to be you know some value without you typing it in because we're running in a test case, and so that's why we're going to do this. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. I will do this. Great. Great. Yeah, and this is so there was a lot here, um, um, and we'll you know we'll we'll probably go back and forth on this some more. Um, so. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. All right. Sure, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. That'll be very cool. Um, all right. So who else is uh, who else is on? And oh, and I forgot to say for Naeem and and Saksham and, and anybody who is, uh, you know, if you have talked and you need to drop off, feel free to drop off. Um, and because you don't have to, you don't have to stick around if, if you know if you if you've already talked and you don't. Uh, John, have anything more you want I, I talk wanted about. to ask you something. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that in config loader slash uh, YAML there is a there are two files. Uh, one is config.py and another is config loader.py. I think when you were moving from config to config loader, oh, no. that file didn't get deleted. Right, let's see. Thank you. Um, oh yes, indeed. Wow, that's uh oh. I wonder I wonder what happened here. Let's see. Thank you, baby. Uh, oops. oops, oops, oops. Let's see. Um, yeah, okay, I probably just forgot to... We need to probably delete this. So, I wonder if that happened anywhere else. Uh, let's make an issue. Thanks for bringing that up. Let's see. Um, and where is the setup.py will tell us what we're actually using here. I, I can delete that file in the current pull request. Okay, if, great. If, if, you, if that's okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, because it looks I like it's using doc and fig loader. Right now. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. So let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need uh, a uh, change log on this one. So let's see. Uh, yeah, I need to add a uh, numpy in setup.py and numpy install require. Mm -hmm. um, wait, what? I can also add... Uh, no, you did it. Uh, I think I forgot to add, like, in the setup.py file, mm -hmm. uh, the numpy require requirement. Oh, oh, 
okay. Yeah, because this was going to fail. So, yeah, because what's going to happen here now is that this is actually going to get run in the CI. Um, so, because we forgot to actually add it to the CI run. And so it very well, um, it may fail here. Um, let's see. Oh, good old model TensorFlow. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably... Yep, okay. Yep, good call. So, yeah, let's add that. Um, okay, I'm glad we're doing this. Because then it'll actually... Or, well, yeah, we definitely really needed to do this so that it could be in the next release. Um, uh, yeah, you can also add what... Uh, the uh, Should I add, uh, should I also add the TensorFlow and TensorFlow Hub and Transformers uh, plugins? Uh, TensorFlow Hub and Transformers. Um, well, there... You mean these guys? Or when you say add them, where do you mean add them? Because I think they're already, or well, you mean here, under under the uh, under the secret stuff. Okay. Okay, or, I didn't see that. Okay, okay. I thought they were not added. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. We do still need to add them under the under the secrets here. Um, but I'll throw in that one since it's not related to config loader. Um, PNG. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, let me make sure. We have PNG now running in CI. Um, check or verify all um, secrets uh, exist. Then secrets are all secrets are populated. We've got so many plugins now. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. I think we're at like 18 or something. So plugins, plugins, plugins. Um, so let's see. Um, cool. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so yeah, who else? Who else? Does anybody have anything they know that's going to be short? We can do you first. Hey, John. Yes, sir. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I needed some help in the Roast issue. I have just shared a snapshot with the oh, yeah, editor let's page. See. Let's see, where did that go? Okay. So you created a sub-process, but you need some inputs on it. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. The issue in which I have to build uh, the Roast yeah, inside the Yeah, that's right. Time. That's right, yeah. Oh, I forgot about this. Okay. Uh, have you pushed up the code that's currently showing your issue yet? No, I haven't pushed. I just need uh, to, uh, to how to make the processes clear. I, I'm not sure about it presently. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, so all we're going to do is basically the exact same thing. We're going to do, we're going to just copy paste this um, mm -hmm. and then run, uh, you know, cargo. Let's see, what is it? Yeah. Cargo build release, um, and you're going to set CWD to um, the cargo audit, yeah, 0 0.11.2 path. So let's see. GitHub. Let's see. I love this GitPod thing. This is very cool. Yeah, this is so cool for use. Yeah, I can't believe it. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, it's great what they've got here. It makes me want to, I know you can stand it up on your own sort of private instance because uh, I know they have some sort of limit on hours. Um, so it would be cool yeah, to have some sort of a, private a... instance set up. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I would love to, to figure that out just in case. I don't know because uh, yeah, it would definitely be nice to have that on a on some server somewhere. Uh, it's Takes very some handy. To load, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's see. Well, that's loading. Does anybody else want to talk about it? Or wait, let's see. Is it going? Is it going? Maybe. All right. Great. Yeah. It's... So. Cargo build. Aha, I see where the disconnect is. Okay. Um, 
So where's our test? Here? I just created a new sub process above the older one. Yeah, I saw and that. Here I just called it. Cool. Let's see. All right. Okay. So we don't need an operation. Oh, it could be good. Um, might as well make an operation, I guess. Um, let's see. Cargo build release. Um, okay. Uh, CWD package builder. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, and then obviously you're going to want to change these underscores here. Um, yeah, uh, the, yeah, they are different from the below one. Yeah, the yeah. variables are different. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so we should be able to call. Uh, I think we want to. Let's just get rid of this for now. Um, uh, I'll comment it out. This way, we can, I think if we comment this out, we should be able to see what it's doing. Um, let's see. So cargo build release, CWD, package input, new proc, new proc.communicate. Um, do we need to call the new proc.wait? Uh, I don't think so. Do we? Uh, I'm pretty sure communicate does that. I think we'll be good. Okay. Um, so new proc, standard out is zero. I think what we need here in this specific case is we just need if standard error, then um, then we raise exception. Standard error. I'm not sure on this, but we'll just we're just trying things right now. Um, let's see. Okay, so what you need to do is okay so we talked about um okay how do i explain this all right so when you build the okay so we've downloaded the source to cargo audit yeah. right and yeah. with rust and with Rust, we, we were downloading the, the compiled version of Rust, right? Um, mm -hmm. So we have the Rust binary in this folder, right? And when we add this, uh, when we add a full, when we add a directory to the path, uh, the you know all all uppercase path environment variable. Let me see if I can show you here. So echo path. Are you familiar with the path at all, or? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I have read the uh, the article that you have sent. Okay, great, about great. The okay. So for anybody else that's not familiar, basically, what you know, any any program that you type in on the command line, like dffml, um, it has to be in this uh, path environment variable um, for yeah. for you to be able to run that. Um, and so these are all the directories that we're going to search um, to see if you know whatever this command that you typed is. In, in one of those directories. Um, and so we need, since we downloaded Rust, we add that to the path. And now this cargo audit that we downloaded is actually just the source code. Um, and so if we look in this directory, it's just going to be the source code of cargo audit. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to um, compile this. Um, so let's see, this is test run. Oops, how do we get this? Where did that comment go? Okay, so we need to look for this binary here, uh, basically because we've got this cached. Um, we're working on this, you know, uh, what is this? Like, uh, yeah, the cache download unpack archive. So what this function is going to do is going to download um, to. It's going to download this. It's it's going to take this URL, it downloads or it saves it at this location, and then it extracts it to this location. Um, so when we run this function or when test run happens, um, it will have already downloaded and extracted all those files. Um, and so what we can do is we can say if not, um, you know, cargo audit slash. So if this thing does not exist. Um, which is, you know, this is this is the result of compiling uh, cargo audit will produce this binary, uh, uh, will produce the cargo audit binary in this location here. Um, so let's see, let's see, 
Uh, we should probably make this like a variable. So, oops. Cargo. Audit. Um, binder. So the binary directory. The directory where the binary is in. Um, so if not, this guy um, is file, then we want to go comp run the compilation. Right? So if that file doesn't exist, then we need to go pass, you know, we need to go into this directory here and run the compilation, and then that will produce this file. Um, so let's see. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It is okay, sense. cool. So I believe this is what you need here. Um, yeah, thank you. Let's see, and I wonder if I can give you, well, I'll give you a screen, or how can we do this best? Uh, I guess I'll just copy-paste this into the issue. So, because uh, I'm not sure how you get this workspace back. Um, it may just save for you, right? But I don't, I'm not sure. So yeah, there you go. I can watch it in the video, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so this is what, this is what you need to do there. Um, I believe that will do the trick they... for you. And then you need to yeah. add this directory to the path. Yeah, and sometimes this uh, directory does not exit the target release. Then we have to create it over here, right? Ex well, so so we're basically we're saying okay, this cargo audit vendor is is going to be the source code for cargo audit, and then there's the target release. It, there's when you run the build, it creates the binary under this slash target slash release directory. Um, so we check if this cargo audit within slash target slash release is a file. If it is not a file, then we run the build, which will produce this file. Um, and that file is the binary where we're gonna, that we're going to run. Um, and so we need to add that directory where it will live, um, which is this target release to the path so that we can run it. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So I think that will do the trick for you there. Um, and then, yeah, so you can figure this out. Uh, oops. All right. Um, let's see. Is that all for you, Yash, at this point? Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's all I want to ask. Sweet, sweet. All right, great. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. So, who who wants to go next? I think. Let's, let's make a note of this. So should I just go ahead and go ahead and chime in while 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 I'm writing this, and we can get started on whoever wants to go next. Is my audio better, John? Uh, it's still very very. Um, I I can barely hear you still. Is it okay? Can everybody else? How can everybody else hear Ogden? Does he sound far away? Yeah, it sounds far away. Okay. Yeah. Still, uh, I can barely hear you, Ogden. Oh, is it any better? Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, John, did you take a look at the pull request? Like, is there anything left in that? Let's see. On the yes, this guy. Um, no, I didn't go on. I wasn't online yesterday. Um, so let's see. But I believe it looked like it was almost done last time. Do 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 do. If operation dot inputs continue. Okay, ditch pass auto starts. Nice test. Okay. Announce string out exists. Perfect. This looks great. Um, did you notice anything else? Anything else weird here? Or because this looks perfect to me. Yeah. Great. This will be awesome. Okay. All right. Well, great. Hey, Himachu, uh, you're uh, you're well, and you're you'll, you'll be all ready to go here. Um, okay. So let's see. And actually, you can you can reference this test now. Great. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, let's see. We found here. Let's see. Oh wait, wrong, wrong link. We don't want that. Um, okay. And example of 
how to set up and run the data flow can be found here. And great, let's merge this. Um, nice job, Hagen. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Hagen. Epic. Oh, all green, great. Oh, perfect. Then this makes it into the next release here. Squash and merge. So this is there. There is an issue associated with this. 392. Very exciting. 392. And then we need to async it, and then that will be really great. Okay, I'll start operations without inputs. Very exciting, very exciting. Okay. Oh, this is great. Um, okay. Mm. Oh, and I just remembered. We need... Well, that'll go into with the new operations tutorials, basically. Um, I was going to say, we need a better demo of what the hell to do here. Um, so, but that will happen. Um, is there anything else, uh, Agan? Yeah, uh, I want, wanted to discuss you about 394, the single iterator. Oh, yeah. Oh, goddamn. Yeah, I need to... Okay, let's see. How do I... I was going to give you a complete example of this. Um, maybe I can actually... That's not this to do. Okay. Yeah, I so. tried doing it. Like, I initially thought I could change everything to just generators, but then realized that you can't schedule async generators. You need core routines. So, got stuck there. Um, oh. You mean you can't do create task? Or... No, uh, yeah, you can't do that. Like, I thought, like, I oh, changed great. the dispatch operation to a generator. Uh -huh. but that doesn't work. Oh, oh, I remember what I had to do for this. I had to deal with this recently. Okay. Um, here's what we do. Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad you said that, because now I, hopefully this will be straightforward, because I think I got this recently. Um, let's see. With high level, with no async on high level, this will probably be good way to get this. Um, basically, uh, what we need to do here is, let's see, just grab this as a reference. Okay, so if you have, um, if you have a coroutine, um, let's see, yeah, so we, we call this coroutine, the predict High level dot predict is a coroutine or an async generator, and so okay. we call it. We get the it returns it returns an object that has an a iter method. Um, like it returns the generator object with the a iter method. We call the a iter method. This becomes a coroutine. Like this is a coroutine that needs to be scheduled. Um, this needs comments. Is what this needs. <laughs> um, let's see, and then. We don't have to worry about the event loop stuff, obviously, because we're in an event loop in, in your case. Um, but we do, we basically will just do, you know, uh, create task on the a next uh, method. So we call a next now. Um, so this is the async generator. This is a class. I think it's the same thing. Honestly, I think it's the same thing here. It might be, but mm, I'm not sure. Um, so basically, every time we want to get the next result, um, we we grab or we we call a next to create us a coroutine. We schedule that coroutine. Okay. Now we're going to okay. This is getting fairly complex. So we schedule that coroutine right using create task. Yeah. And then yeah. what we, you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, check the exception to see if the exception is stop async iteration. Um, okay. And where will we do that? Uh, let's see. Uh, like, uh, why do I need to check the exception? Um, because, so, let's see. Okay, let me just paste okay, that I can here. check if the output is an async generator or not. Um, yeah, well... In dispatch operation, or run dispatch, I don't remember. Let's see. Yeah, where is this going to happen? So, it's going to be in run dispatch, I think. 
like, uh, is it is it going to be in Rune Dispatch? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So because here. I can check if that output is a sync generator or not. I was doing that. Yeah, in here. You mean like when you call self dot run, you're gonna it yeah. obviously blows up on the await here. Uh, it returns uh, like what I did was I checked if output is an async generator or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then if it is, um, let's see. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah. So what you'll do is you'll you'll check if it's an async iterator here. If it is, you basically just keep doing. What do you do? You even need to do that? No, you don't even need to do that. Yeah, just check if it's an async gen. If it is an async gen, then do async four um, on it, and then just add the do the input input uh, network dot add. Um, okay. We probably will end up basically just refactoring this. Um, yeah, I like I changed all these two generators. Uh, then I got stuck at that part. But now yeah. I to solve that. Let's see. We're there's another good example of let's see. Yeah. Uh, did you link that? Yeah, I did link that other one. Okay. I don't think you actually need that. Actually. Um, oops. Let's see. Um, I don't think you actually need that. I think what you need is um, util CLI. Util CLI. Yeah, CLI command up here. Why? Oh. I think this is where I ran into the same thing. Result is not known. CLI, not CLI. Command. God, this is ugly. Okay, here we go. This is what you need. So, here you see. Um, we check if it's an async gen function, um, and obviously this is going to be the operation context I'll run in your case. And then if it is, you can just use async for, you know, result. Otherwise, you can return it, or but you're not really going to return it. You're going to do. Um, oh, I initially thought of that, but uh, what if our async generator like it doesn't end? Like if you are waiting to create a list, I want it block it. Oh yeah, well we're not going to create a list in this case, because um, yes, that oh, that's going to be a problem. Right. Yeah, so basically what we're going to do is so refactor, um, uh, run dispatch into two functions. Um, one, basically, or so the the first one, or the top level one, is essentially going to do this, which is this guy here, which does the is async gen function. And then within that, basically within this if else block, you're going to call the other function, which is like, you know, going to be the, let's see. Um, so where is that? Yeah, so. Yeah, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to need to split off everything below nine, line 974, I think. Um, so within here, you do, yeah, you do lctx.acquire. Um, and then you have this if statement here. And then within that if statement, if it's an async gen function, you do this async for, don't create the list. But every time you get one, so everything in the body of this for loop, um, that's basically like outputs, right? So async for outputs in the self.run. Um, and then, let's see, async for outputs in self.run. And then each time you get in outputs, you, you know, run the rest of this function now, which is a new function, um, which will then, you know, ooh, wait, return inputs. I don't think we use that. I don't think that gets used, actually, does it? Mm, this is going to be the question, I guess, is does this return inputs get used? I don't think it gets used. Does it get used? Oh, it might. No. 
I don't think so. That's going to be a question here. So uh, everything after line 974. Let's see. Because basically what you're doing here now is basically whenever you get some outputs, you need to do the same thing you know, that we always do with the outputs where we convert them to new inputs, and then uh, you add them to the input network. And that's going to be the important thing here, basically, is that, you know, every time I'm getting the output from the async iterator, I'm adding it back to the input network. Um, let's see. Uh, and then I guess the open question is, so let's see. Anything after line um, 974, 974 becomes the second or the new function um, which um, um, let's see everything after line 974 becomes the new function which uh, um, no, which is just going to handle the outputs which gets called to handle the outputs um, um, and then Are you sure that uh, we are not using inputs anywhere in the return anywhere we're not using it no I'm asking like are you sure about that uh, like, no I'm not sure about that yeah, yeah and I feel like we are using that somewhere but I can't remember yeah let's see like we are only calling run dispatch in dispatch and dispatch is only being called one size I think yeah I don't Run dispatch, create task. Let's see. See, the thing is, we should be waiting for new input set to tell us. This is why we have the new, this is why it works this way, is because we shouldn't care about the return value of that. Yeah, ignore args. Yeah. Uh, only in here, what we're doing. Let's see. Yeah, we ignore, we ignore the returns value. Okay. So okay. that's perfect. Um, let's see. Thank you, Barry. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So let's um, let's so let's while we're at it, let's make run dispatch. God damn! No! 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 Um, let's make run dispatch um, not return anything because we're not using it right now. And that's just confusing. Um, okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Does that, I think that captures what we were talking about, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything else on this one then? It sounds like we're actually uh, closer than yeah. we thought here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this sounds okay. That's great. Yeah, I'll try it and I'll let you know. Great. Hey, thanks. Oh, this would be really cool. Yeah. Because this then. So, yeah, continue. Continue. I was just going to say that um, this is also going to feed into this uh, this NLP example here yeah, uh, yeah yeah I, i'm like sorting out all those things before yep. the chat exam this is perfect okay this is great this would be great yeah this is i think this is i mean these these two things have, have been on the list for a while so i'm glad to see this getting knocked out thanks for doing that thanks. um anything so, else uh, i i saw it to do in like the op operation decorator like which sounds similar to what you just mentioned to yash about starting new threads uh -huh. I don't think it's being tracked. We probably want to do that. Oh, the we don't have an issue to track starting the yeah. threads. Okay. Like it's, Thank it's, you. It's said to do in line two seventy five in base. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes, we need to make an issue for that. Um, well, let's just double check real quick. Uh, thread, yeah, threads. Apparently, I've checked before. System local resource management. Uh, it's not really the same thing. No, it kind of is the same thing. Um, oh. This this is going to be a massively painful issue. Um, let's see. Uh, basically, the thing behind this issue is that um, 
there's like there needs to be some concept of like what are the system local resources things like disk and threads and stuff um that the orchestrator has some knowledge of because the operations might need some knowledge uh because when we try to start like if we're running a bunch of operations and they kick off like a million threads like each one kicks off a thread and we're running 5,000 operations well we really should never be running 5,000 threads like that's just going to screw up the computer what we want to do is like figure out how many cores or like how many threads you can run per core and then how many cores you have and then cap that at the, that's the maximum number of threads you actually want to be running at a time because anything beyond that and, and it's just pointless uh, we can't schedule them all um or the operating system can't schedule them all um so uh mm, let's see Basically, the idea behind this was that anytime you saw def instead of async def, you would spin off a thread. But I think we still, I think I kind of, I don't think we want to do this one yet because it might end up uh, being a mess. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. yeah, because you can easily end up spinning up a million threads on accident. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so I think I think we'll probably hold off on that one. Um, let's see. Uh, cool. Yeah, anything Anything else there? Or? No, nothing, nothing. Great. Yeah, great. Great. Thanks. Debugged. How to? If anybody else wants to just start chatting, I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna note down what we just talked about here. Does anybody have anything else? If no one has anything else, we'll adjourn for the day. All right. Well, I'll see you guys on Gitter, and uh, I'm going to try to roll the release today. So, you know, we may end up with a million problems, um, but hopefully not. I usually try to release on Friday, and that's that's dangerous. I don't know why I always do that, but you know, I like to live dangerously there. So um, today we're going to do the responsible thing and release in the middle of the week. Um, but yeah, all right, cool. Uh, just ping me if you need anything, and does anybody need to stay? Oh, also, GSOC. I believe today is um, the final day to you know put in your final proposal. So if you need to change your proposal from draft status to final status or else we can't we can't um we don't have the option of accepting you um so make sure you've got it in as the final status um and i'm going to go through and i think i probably have a few messages from people um so i'm going to go through and, and check those messages and and if you haven't gotten feedback on something that you're asking specifically here then i'll try to get back to you uh within the next few hours and um then yeah, make sure your proposal is in final status so that we can actually accept. Um, actually, the final time for submitting the proposal is just a half an hour to go. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, oh yeah, because it's is it your time zone specific? Anyways, let me let me jump off the call and start uh, start answering people's questions then. Um, so yeah, make sure you have it in as final status. Um, unless you have anything you need from me and then make sure you just ping me right now then uh and or else does anybody have anything they want to talk to me about on the phone here or is everybody pretty much no i think everybody pretty much knows where they're at with your proposals so all right great oh yeah so just make sure those are they have it as final draft in the system um cool all right, thanks guys. Just ping me um, soon if there's anything, and otherwise, so we've got the mentors and I will be the other mentors and I will be reviewing um, the proposals, um, and I believe what is it? It's in April or something. What is the timeline? Yeah, it's fourth of May. Fourth May. Fourth of May now. Yeah, because they just changed it, right? So, um, yeah, May fourth. Okay, so yeah, you guys, you'll you'll hear on May fourth. Wow, May fourth, really? That seems yeah. well. I guess they moved it back. I'm like, that seems late, but that's why. Yeah, um, due to the go, due it to was twenty seventh April earlier, so yeah. they moved it a week ahead. Okay, they moved yeah. the community. They extended the community bonding period by a week too. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Huh. Let's see. Well, yeah. So there, you'll all find out. Um, you'll you'll find out on May fourth then, because um, we can't tell anybody before um, Google says we tell people because it's it's Google's party. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys, and I will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Stay healthy.